ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise and glory be to Allah, we thank Him and we seek His help and His guidance and His pleasure and His forgiveness and we seek protection with Allah from the evil whispers within ourselves and from the consequences of our evil deeds. Whomever Allah Azza wa Jal guides, no one can ever lead astray and whomever Allah Azza wa Jal leads, leads astray, none can ever guide. And we testify that no one is worthy of our worship and our devotion and our love and obedience in the absolute sense but Allah Azza wa Jal alone without any partners. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in truth his prophet and his servant and his messenger whom he sent as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner and a mercy before the coming of the hour. May Allah azza wa jal grant us and you a life upon his religion and an adherence to his guidance until we breathe our last and reunite us with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest gardens of Jannah. Allahumma ameen. It was from the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this frequent supplication he would make and teach is ya wali al-islam wa ahlihi masikni al-islam hatta alqaki alayh o guardian of islam and its people have me hold on to islam until i meet you with it o guardian of islam and its people have me help me hold on to islam until i meet you with it and alongside the obvious necessity of learning this dua and asking Allah Azza wa Jal for guidance, embedded in that dua is the reminder that Allah is the guardian of Islam and the guardian of the Muslims and not us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, there is a promise that Allah will continue to guard Islam and its people from ever being wiped out. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a very famous mutawatir hadith, abundantly recurring, narrated generation upon generation, he said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي على الحق ظاهرين لا يضرهم من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم على ذلك. That there will never cease, it will never die, never be extinguished, never go extinct. A group of my ummah will always, will never stop being upon the truth that I reveal, unfazed. They will not be phased, will not be harmed by those who disagree with them or those who desert them and betray them until the ultimate affair of Allah comes to pass while they are like that. And so we must always remember this when our Islam or our Muslim ummah faces challenges that first of all, Islam will always continue being. And whatever wasn't Islam, whatever has not always been Islam, will never be Islam. The Islam of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for sure there is flexibility to be applied in all times and places, but the fundamentals, the constants of Islam, they are Islam. But on top of that, that there will always be Islam as a people, a group, a community, a global community now by Allah's grace, of Muslims that hold on to that Islam until the Day of Judgment. That will never, ever be entirely derailed, entirely put out. Maybe en route, there may be people who deviate, people whom Allah Azza wa Jal chooses to raise them through being afflicted, through choosing them to be martyrs and otherwise. But the Ummah itself will never be inverted, will never be sabotaged in its entirety. And if you study history, it is so refreshing to show you the resilience that Allah has granted this ummah and to reassure you that he will continue granting it. You know, when the Prophet ﷺ died, the ummah went through a very turbulent stage and it seemed like it was in great peril. And only one person stood by himself seemingly until people rallied around him. It was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. 
even Umar said, maybe we should back down, maybe we should just let it go, maybe we should pick our battle. When that battle, had it not been fought, had that confrontation not been stood in front of valiantly, Islam would never have been the same. And so Allah stabilized the Ummah through Abu Bakr. And then, as Abu Ibrahim al-Muzani says, Allah saved this Ummah with Abu Bakr on the day of Ridda, and then Imam Ahmad on the day of the Mihna. There was a, a great Mihna in the third century of Islam, a great inquisition, a great fitna, so much turmoil. And Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, was of the only remaining scholars, or the only visibly remaining scholar, that had he not held his ground, things could have been extremely different. And I will return to Imam Ahmad in a second. But even beyond that, even generations later, when it looked like the Ummah was on its heels, and it was finished and done with, when the Mongol scourge took the Ummah by storm, just when there was no one left to defend the Muslim Ummah, Allah Azza wa Jal, I don't want to say snuck, but inserted Islam into the Mongol ranks, and they became the Muslim Ummah. They became Muslims. So this deen is invincible. This deen is indestructible. And the Ummah will continue to survive. You know, it was destined for me to uh, revisit at a bit of length uh, the life of Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, at that inquisition I spoke about this past week. And what occurred in that, in that time, in that episode, has so much for us to learn from and so much for us to lean on in our dark moments when there seems to be so much bad news about Islam and the Muslims everywhere you turn. And Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, <coughs> he was faced with a group of people that ascended to power, a, a faction called the Mu'tazila, who tried to redefine Islam entirely based on them being so fond of, so enamored by Greek philosophy. So they tried to like reinterpret Islam to make it basically an Islamicized, like a, an Islamic sense to Greek philosophy. They wanted to repackage the whole deen in a sense, in a great sense. And so he stood there, and so many of the scholars that stood like him were killed. And he was taken, and they could not kill him right away because he had such status with the people. People revered him so much. They wanted to know, is Imam Ahmad going to give in or not? And after the story unfolds, when you look at it from every angle, through all the testimonies, all, all the records, it is un they had no mercy on Imam Ahmad except that they couldn't kill him. They did not regard the fact that he was over 70 years old at the time. One of those who was administering the punishment, who would make a, uh, an example out of Imam Ahmad publicly by whipping him over and over again, he said, every time I whipped him, I said, this time the whip is going to come out of his mouth. Though he's whipping him in his back. Because he said of how severely the flesh, the meat on his back was falling apart. I felt like the whip was going to go through him one more time. It was going to puncture all the way through him. Others said they, that when they struck Imam Ahmad the first time with the whip, clots all appeared on his back. And they struck him a second time, the clots ruptured. He began to bleed. And then they brought people to take salt and stick it in the injury to make it to put his body on fire, basically. And that was the first and the second strike of dozens of strikes he would take every single day. Rahimahullah <coughs> ta'ala. One of the men that stood guard, they said, we beat Ahmed in a way that would have broken, would have demolished an elephant. But somehow he survived. But the issue is that if you read deeply into the story, you will realize that even Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, got to a point where he felt a great deal of weakness. Like, it, it, it sh he was either going to give in or he was going to die shaheed. But he was not going to be able to last it forever. He's not superhuman. Rahimahullah ta'ala. To the point that he tried every single day, he felt like he was going to die. And so he chose to fast one day after another in hopes that he would die fasting. And then one time the guard told him, just drink, man. You, you can't torture yourself like this. One of them had sympathy for him. And so he said to him, fine, give me the water. And then by the time he brought the water, he would say, no, I changed my mind. I might die today. So he began to waver. And then after he was released, fast forwarding the story, his sons kept hearing him make dua for a person whose name was Abu Haytham at tayyar 
Rahimahullah. He says, they told him, Dad, why do you always pray for this guy that Allah forgive him? He said, He's the only one that bolstered me. I was about to, he kept me firm. He said, he was in a prison cell with me. And he said to me, Oh, Ahmed, stand firm. Don't buckle. Because if you go to the state records, you go to the records of the government, you will see that I have been whipped 18,000 times across the scattered across my life for being upon falsehood he was a thief so every time you get caught you get punished and get released i was whipped 18,000 times upon falsehood so you now stand firm you're on the truth in ta'ish ta'ish hamidan wa in tamut tamut shahidan he used to tell me if you live you're going to live glorified and if you die you die shaheed hold on he said so he would constantly ask Allah to forgive him because he was the one that Allah put. That's what I want to point out. Allah had him in the cell together to keep him firm in a way that could have otherwise had consequences, ugly consequences on the whole ummah. So Allah Azza wa Jal is the protector of this ummah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to constantly revisit that so we don't get too jaded, get too dispirited by the events of the age. May Allah Azza wa Jal return this ummah to from its weakness and fix for us our stay with him, our duty to him, and our stay in this world, return this ummah to its dignity and its honor. Allahumma ameen. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله. The question may be a, a little bit sour, but how do we reinstate our confidence in Allah عز وجل in the age of weakness? Some people think that this is too much. I don't want to be here. I don't want. Allah chose for you to be here. You wish for some sort of miracle to happen. But maybe if miracles happen, you will once again not take part in the rebuild of this ummah. We always look for that. We look for some explanation or some hope that has nothing to do with us. Even in real life, like when you see someone very talented, a businessman or an athlete, you always hear these crazy things about them, that they're just gifted. No, they've read more books than you, have tried harder than you. This person has like some deal with the devil. That's why he has a great three-point shot or he's like a billionaire. Or no, he just put in more hours, right? And so the concept of, of clinging to a miracle is very dangerous. Clinging to Allah Azza wa Jal and doing your duty is our only way out. He is the guardian. But he has employed us simply by you living today. Allah has employed you. You, you have been enlisted whether you like it or not in the service. So don't be overwhelmed. He is the guardian, but you have a role. You know, also the issue of miracles, let's just take this one step further. W miracles are all around us. One of our mentors used to always say this. He goes, it is not the absence of miracles that is weakening people. It is the presence of arrogance or the presence of absent-mindedness. And he gives a beautiful example, this teacher of mine. He says, if I were to slap a wooden table and an apple would come out, you would consider that a miracle. But why don't we consider a miracle the fact that a wooden tree produces apples? Miracles are everywhere, but we're just not thinking. And so the way to reinstate our confidence with Allah Azza wa Jal is to put in the work, part of it, to Cleanse out the arrogance, cleanse out the heedlessness, and to just look. Allah Azza wa Jal said that. How many signs I filled the heavens and the earth, not just the lives of the prophets, the heavens and the earth with, and they pass over it while oblivious. You know, even in the smallest things, Allah Azza wa Jal shows us His strength and our weakness to reinstate that we cling to Him. When the Quran says, for example, Durib ya yuhannas, O humanity, Durib mathalun fastami'ula. An example has been struck, so listen to it carefully. Inna ladina tadu'una min dunillah, these all others besides Allah that you worship, 
But even if you only worship Allah, you may not adore Him and recognize His greatness as you should. All others, he says, cannot create a fly even if they collaborate for it. You think about that in 2020. If all the most brilliant researchers of the world were to get together to create a fly, would they be able to do it? Would they be able to put together the 14,000 genes or the 270 degree vision that the fly is able to do? This little creature, few millimeters long. And then Allah says, وَإِن يَسْلُبْهُمُ الذُّبَابُ شَيْئًا لَا يَسْتَنْقِذُوهُ مِنْهِ In the age of superpowers, realize, Allah saying in the Qur'an, if the fly were to take something away from them, they wouldn't be able to retrieve it. You know, interestingly, this is known at face value, the Sahaba understood this. But we get to examine this at a deeper level now if we want to. Flies, when they land on something, they liquefy it. Like they spit something out, they digest it on the outside. So once they take it, it's not the same thing anymore. Without going into the, the rabbit hole of scientific miracles that I'm very hesitant about. But even the fly, when it snatches something from humanity, humanity can't take it back. So you reflect on the little things, the apple and the fly. And then you stop worrying about how do I bring this ummah back. The final ayah I will mention, when Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ The example of those who set up rivals with Allah. And that's not just ritual, that could be dependence as well. كَمَثَلِ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ اتَّخَذَتْ بَيْتَ It's like the example of that spider that has a, a house, the spider web, right? Everyone and everything, all the resources, all of the planning are as vulnerable, as weak as the spider's web. Someone absentmindedly could just knock it off. The spider works so hard to put that web together and then a gust of wind just dismantles it altogether. And maybe this is just to realize Allah's strength, right? And everyone else's utter weakness. Maybe that's a lesson for us as well. We don't know exactly how to protect the ummah or how to rebuild the ummah. You don't have to. Just be like the spider. It tears down the web, it goes back to working. It builds another web. And if Allah wishes, He protects the web. And if others are building a more sophisticated structure and you deserve it, Allah will tear down their web. It's all cobwebs. When we understand that Allah is the King, He is the Mighty, He is the Master, He is the Guardian. And so I'll end with what I began with. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Waliya al-Islami wa ahlihi masikni al-Islam hatta al-Qaqa alay. O Guardian of Islam and its people, have me hold on to Islam until I meet you with it. Understand that, call upon Allah with that, and live by it. May Allah Azza wa enable us and you to do so. Allahumma ghfir lana wa rahamna. Allahumma ghfir lana wa rahamna. Allahumma ghfir lana wa rahamna. Allahumma ya waliya al-Islam wa ahlihi masikna al-Islam hatta nalqaka alayh. Ighfir illahumma lil-Muslimina wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat. Allahumma izza al-Islam wa unsur al-Muslimin. اللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويتاب فيه على أهل معصيتك ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على البشير النذير محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين